everybody. It's part of our 15th anniversary. Everyone in uh, the organization thought it'd be cool to go back and have me watch Redemption, which uh, was kind of our coming out party. Complexity Redemption um, was my idea and Daniel Frome's idea um, back when eSports was really, really new. It occurred to us that no one had really followed a team to one of these events. No one had gone behind the curtain, behind closed doors to kind of show the experience. And I paid Daniel and flew him in, said, hey, turn the camera on, let's see what we get. Um, hopefully we do well, maybe we won't. Uh, we had a heck of a run. And uh, after we captured it, we knew we had something special right away. And Daniel did all the heavy lifting. Um, I spent dozens of hours with him uh, producing this kind of scene by scene to try to make something to show people just how passionate everyone in complexity was about Counter-Strike and, and about eSports. And uh, thus was born uh, Complexity Redemption. The old Complexity logo. In the old days, we were called Complexity Syndicate, actually. Um, I didn't want to do clan right away um, because it seemed, I don't know, wasn't crazy about the word clan. Syndicate sounded a little badass, so we went with that. GW Films was Daniel Frome's uh, company. And you'll game surge IRC. I miss IRC. Team Sportcast Network was uh, the shoutcasting network back then. A bunch of those guys are still in the scene. And here we go. Professional video game organizations. Winter CPL trip. Language may be offensive. We really wanted to try to set the tone as we did this. Um, a lot of people did not like the way I entered this scene. I kind of came in like a bull in a sh china shop, to be honest. And uh, people didn't like that. They didn't like the fact that someone had challenged Team 3D publicly. They didn't like the fact that someone came in and said, hey, we're going to go out there, we're going to bang their heads around, and we're going to be the best American team. So there was a lot of anger on the Prime website back then, gotfrag.com. And we tried to capture the tone going into this event, um, and then the tone after the event. Cole One is me. That was my gamer tag. I'm buying the team. You can't buy chemistry. It's bad for the community. People, uh, people are pretty angry the way I came in. Got humbled a little bit. This team has no chemistry. Little did they know we'd been practicing harder than anyone had ever practiced. Little did they know the effort and the passion that was going on behind closed doors to get this team ready for this event. This was the first real land moment in complexity history where your heart just explodes and you know like we're on to something special here. Of course we got Mouse early here. Best team in Germany. Everyone's saying we're going to get destroyed. And here we are. I believe that's Jason Cohen in the background. He produces uh, for Overwatch League now. See a lot of people in this video in the background that are still in esports. Fraud, in my opinion, the best American Counter-Strike player in history. My opinion. Inferno looked a little different back then. Here we go. One on one. Calm down. Fake it. We went crazy. It was all we could do to let him defuse the bomb before we tackled him. 1917 in overtime. That moment, if you had to pick any one moment, was definitely one of our coming out parties where people are like, oh wow, maybe these guys are actually good. You see Bullseye in there, Storm, Fraud, of course, Trip. One of the best in-game leaders in American history by far. It's Bullseye. When I signed Bullseye, his signing bonus was a brand new motorcycle, <laughs> crotch rocket. It was Angel, who built the CPL.
You look at the simplicity of the shirts and, and things back then. There's my flip phone. That was before the red tie. Check out that outfit, man. Is that, is that not like early 2000s? He had the, f the camera on all the time, and you almost forget about it after a while, and he just hold it in his lap and film. So now people are like, oh, wow, they're good. Like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Fraud's the man, you know, D's guy. I knew complexity would do it. Like, oh, the, the bandwagon has begun. <laughs> and this is, for better or for worse, where my reputation. <laughs> For being passionate kind of came along. I was always a football player. You know, I come from a football world. So I want to go out there and crack heads. And I tried to bring that intensity to the team and <laughs> kick a lot of chairs. At my age now, I laugh and just kind of shake my head, but I'm glad I did it. It defined the passion that's driven this organization for many years. Four Kings, the best team in England. Anybody remember Four Kings? Do this is a great map. Another win. I'm known for crying after big wins. One of my first my interviews <laughs> and, uh, I'm a, big a few fan. hundred ago. I grew up playing football and, uh, I get into it. I'm not trying to be cool. I'm not trying to be a tough guy. I'm I'm right there with them. I was young. I'm right behind them. I bleed and die for them, and uh, they worked hard, and uh, we're pretty fortunate right now. My job. That is, is the uh, famous manager, basement of the Hyatt in Dallas, Texas, and I where Western Esports was arguably born. Before I came down here, and they're an amazing team, and we're very fortunate to have the success we did. Good stuff, Bob. So looking forward here now, Zach. I know you got the brackets right in front of us. Who, oh, man? Uh, Look at these guys. <laughs> these were some of the pioneers of broadcasting, we TSN really guys, who's been doing in esports, well. especially Western esports. Of, uh, let me they were doing it long before Twitch, before YouTube. When we released this video, there was no YouTube. You had to download the video and watch it on your computer. And we would crash server farms with so many kids trying to download the video. Anything else I can find because we're going to need a lot of good fortune to uh, hang with these guys. We're just going to do our best. And uh, I was young then. <laughs> that was a few years ago, a few beers ago. <laughs> Here's Danny. That's the old complexity logo. The red part was a C, and then the whole thing was an S for Complexity Syndicate. That's why the logo looks like an S. Lined up the old CRTs. I smoked back then. I didn't go out and smoke because everything was always delayed. Roll CT. I honestly, going into this, didn't know if we could beat these guys. D Sky was really hot at that time. Look at the old nuke. Look at Hut. Makes me smile. Look at these headphones and the old. Bring me the pistols. Gotta win the pistol rounds in this game, man. Especially then, because ecos are easy, it seems, in CSGO. Ecos were very rare back then, winning the pistol round. It's nearly a guarantee of 3-0 that half. Here comes Storm's big moment, I believe. We had a lot of trouble on Nuke over the years. It was kind of our curse map. There's Warden, current manager of our Counter-Strike division around here. All right, this wasn't the storm one that's coming. Sexy. <laughs> now you're in their heads was one of the famous quotes people always throw back to me. It's just an old football player trying to figure out Counter-Strike and how to coach these young guys to elevate 
what they were doing in their communication, their teamwork, and their passion for the game and just try to feed them energy. Here comes the Storm play. This is a really good play. Storm was one of the smartest, most methodical players we ever had. <laughs> <laughs> that just, uh, that was one of those moments that just came out. The, Laurent, the, uh, the guy standing right there, worked for ESL for years and years and now has a company called Liquid Dog, still one of the very best tech guys in all of esports. And he was always watching me for my misbehavior. Look how young Warden was back then. So we were swinging above our weight level this entire tournament, to be honest with you. We were the new guys on the block. Back then, you weren't like seated. You came, well, excuse me, teams were seated, and then but it was an open. So any team could come, and if you were playing well enough that event, due to the open nature of the event, you could make it all the way to the end. You just had to go through the seated teams. And you know, we were, I don't even remember we were seated, but if we were, it was super, super deep. We had a giant mountain to climb, and we had to be, many of the very best teams to get to where we did. I think Daniel did a really good job capturing the emotion of what was going on and including enough game footage from the perspective of the LAN to, to really bring the viewer in. Over the years, I've had hundreds and hundreds of people come to me and be like, this is the video that got me into esports. This is a video that convinced me there's a future in this and that I could really excel at this um, and be something special at gaming, which is something I love. I think this movie is Bootman. He used to do the Gottfrag reviews, <laughs> anti-stratting us. But a lot of people would come to me and just be like, this is a video that gave birth to my dream. And a bunch of today's best players and stars, when I see them at events, are like, it was that redemption movie, man. It was you behind him screaming and kicking chairs. It made me realize, wow, this thing's for real. And uh, that means a lot to me. Feels good, what? Feels good beating a team 16-6. Yeah. Here's the hip cam again. Daniel from special. He just kind of hold it low and let it run all the time. We took down six seed. Look how young Danny was. I'm pretty sure he's gone was third seed. What do you think about all the kids going, oh my fraud? They love your op. Seriously, they're all talking about it on the net. I don't I know if you've playing. seen. I've seen it. Yeah. I was in this hotel lobby a few months back, and it was so surreal. Walking through this lobby all these years later with ghosts of CPL pass looking out from each shadow. Danny was such an amazing player, and he stayed loyal to us. So many poaching offers. He always stayed with us and always showed up when we needed him. This next scene, he had the camera on, just kind of sitting half on the table and half on his lap. I come into the room, and I'm really emotional because I didn't expect us to do this well, and I was crying. <laughs> Excuse the F-bombs. You're crying? You're so happy? I'd put a lot into this team. A lot of hours, a lot of money. A lot of my just reputation, I guess, and, and everything I had. And uh, I don't know, I just had one of those breakdown moments, kind of in a good way, because you're happy and you're grateful. He showed it to me later, and he said, I, I guess you're probably not going to let me put this in here. And I'm like, hey, we set out to produce the real thing, you know, to go behind the curtain. So I, I let him put it in. And some people make fun of me. People are always going to make fun of you when you chase your dreams, and you're going to cry and be passionate about it. My kids got to watch this goofy thing, you know, it's seeing Dad crying like a goofy old coach. But if you want to resonate with people, you want real fans and you want real supporters who are going to invest in you, I believe you got to be real with them and you got to be transparent. That's why we do complexity POV these days. 
We want our fans to come behind the closed doors. We want our fans to go behind the curtain to see what it's really like. If we win, we win. If we lose, we lose. But if our fans follow us through thick and thin, then we've really won. Nobody can touch you right now. You fucking humiliated four kings. You humiliated these guys. Nobody can touch you right now. And the thing is, like, we've come this far. Why stop? Warden, man. Warden is a natural born leader. Super grateful he's still in the family. Look at that. My shirt's untucked. I've been jumping around like a crazy man. I wore a tie. Oh, and then after every win, we'd order up like, um, what was it? Like champagne, and then we'd order the players' food and stuff like that. We always got the same guy, so we'd always say, big tip, big tip. But I started wearing a tie because every, when I go to an event, everyone's in like sweatpants and like ripped up t-shirts and I wanted to be different. I wanted to treat this like a real business. I wanted to build a real sports property and I felt like I should dress the part. Like, you know, if it's important to you and you're going into a situation um, that you want to be respected and have a professional organization, I always thought I'm going to be different by wearing a tie. In the real world, I guess you could say everyone wears a tie, so you're different if you dress down. In the esports world, I felt that it would be different um, to dress the role of a GM, a, a, of an owner. So even though I hate wearing this kind of stuff, you know, on the weekends or anytime really, you know, I, I, I wanted to be different and to take it seriously. Back at it. Rival Gamer Co, man. S Gary Siege Sanchez. Man, I hope I got that name right. Was one of the names behind this. And he messaged me for the first time in over a decade, like three months ago. That name will bring back a lot of memories to some of the real old school guys. They beat us up pretty good here. American team stopping our run after running over some European squads. It was really, really hard because I felt they just cashed it in. I felt they weren't talking. I felt there was no energy. I felt there was no passion. And to be honest, I was pretty pissed off. Um, I was really disappointed in the effort that time. I think it was one of those things where we had just been grinding so many matches. They were just emotionally drained and they just didn't have the energy to bring to this match, which is totally understandable. Like I said, we were swinging so far above our weight class already, and we just ran out of gas a little bit. You can hear my voices going out. That was Boomer Man. I, man, no, no. I want to make I think that's Boomer Man. Glenn, gosh, I should have looked up some of these names before I did this. There's one of my lines in here. If you don't want to win, go on welfare. Again, you could tell he's got the camera. He's holding it low. I didn't know I was being filmed in this scene. If I had to do it over again, I wouldn't have said, if you want to lose, go on welfare, because I think that's really just cruel to people who are down and out and have had a tough run of things. I had a beer, and I was just running my mouth and didn't know I was on camera. And again, even though I regretted saying it and I didn't like it, we, did, we opted to put it in. We opted for transparency and realism over some like propaganda. See how he's holding the camera low again? They didn't know it was on. That, that's how he captured a lot of the real talk that was going on. Daniel did a great job. Sure, the camera angles aren't always like professional or whatever, but he ca he captured the realism. Captured the real talk. My voice is just about completely gone by now. It would later completely go out. I'm telling them now, like, I didn't feel they showed up, so I left. I'm doing my best, like, you know, Lombardi and coaching. Uh, there weren't really coaches back then. There sure as hell weren't GMs or owners that got behind the team and, and tried to pump them full of energy, tried to teach them proper communication and teamwork based off traditional stick and ball sports. I do not pretend to be some expert. 
I just do the best I can because no we'll I truly do no care. And uh, we'll sometimes you end up looking uh, silly, but yeah, I'd rather look silly and leave it all out there um, than be scared uh, and hide cower in the corner, you know? It makes me smile to see these guys. They're so young. All these years later. so great. There's no pressure. Let's try to pick up one more. If we don't, we are we're already champions. We can lose till we five six. We have to lose two more fucking five six in the world. Come on. All hanging out in the hotel room, chilling on the double beds. Now we're building a multi-million dollar corporate headquarters. Things have come a long ways, my friends. <laughs> Things have come a long ways. Have some fun. Anybody remember this guy? NOA was a special team. element right gosh I'm getting old they were just really they were better than us and as you've seen in the video they win the whole event so we came out of nowhere lost to the eventual winners of the event and really surprised the entire esports world. There you see Jason Bass in the background. He was an eventual owner of Complexity up until recently. We first met at this event, I believe. They pushed us around pretty good. They were a great team. Great team. But we came from nowhere and made the biggest jump from a nobody team up until that had ever happened up until that point in history. And we just ran out of gas and hit teams that were simply better than us at that point. But the heart of this roster would go on to become the number one team in the world. Be the first team to win on international soil, American team to win on international soil, ESWC. And then win ISC 2006. That video is on YouTube. Now you can see the tone around us changed. This is our coming out party. From this video on, we were one of the most famous teams in the world. Finishing fifth in an event like that was, was really a special accomplishment. And I single-handedly picked this song. I like old rock and roll. And uh, I don't know, I just felt that this song perfectly captured the essence of, of what this was. Here you could see, I wanted to put in the player shots to start building their facial recognition and, and brands in the marketplace as videos and, and documentation of esports as a sport. Um, you know, it was really just becoming a thing. And I believe we were the first Western group to ever do a documentary like this. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. And then we made Complexity Armageddon. It actually came out like nine months late. <laughs> but uh, that was good. And then you can look through some of these names here. There's Daniel from. We spent dozens of hours working on this. Pictures of the guys hanging out. The old TSN guys, we wanted to make sure we got them plenty of credit. Smeagol and Boomerman, and there's our staff. Sony and Fro and Digix. <laughs> Some old names. We threw in our Call of Duty squad. We had a Call of Duty squad way back 2004.
Stormella was uh, Storm's girlfriend. Glostic was Laurent that I mentioned earlier from Liquid Dogs. Knoxville was a European guy I brought in to help the team. Art of War Central, where you used to have to rent game servers to play on. But overall, you know, that's complexity redemption. The name was obviously chosen because I felt that this event was our redemption. We went from being the scourge, just laughed at, to a huge fan base and being respected. We were always a little bit controversial. Maybe we wouldn't do everything right. There's my daughter who's now 14 and in ninth grade. It's a good, uh, good documentary and I think it, uh, I think it captures who we were and what, uh, what we stood for. And, you know, I made a lot of mistakes over the years. And us as, a, you know, complexity probably made a lot of mistakes over the years, but I don't know many groups that have cared more or tried harder. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Hey guys, we release new content every day. So if you like this one, make sure to hit subscribe and get alerted for tomorrow's video.